My favorite thing that we do is close our eyes and paddle. And if you close your eyes and you just listen, and you, all the paddles are going in at the same time, it just gets to your soul. Everybody was quite shocked that I would get cancer, and I was shocked that I would get cancer. I did not consider myself to be somebody who would be at risk for it. I was a vegetarian. I, I worked out. I, I had a good, healthy lifestyle. I had four kids. It just, and I was too young. I was only 40. I didn't even think you had to worry about it yet when you're 40. No. I thought it was something that happened to older people. <laughs> I came home bawling. Well, first I stopped at the office and said, I won't be back today. And I came home, I cried all the way home, and, and, and Ray was here, thank God, and I, I just walked in and I said, I have breast cancer. I said, but you know what? Now I can drag him out. He said, are you kidding me? I said, no. <laughs> it's the only good thing I can think about, <laughs> you know? I've always been near the water and on the water and I, I don't have a boat now so I just like being back out on the water. And then when I got diagnosed I, I said I wanted my life back so I would go down for radiation in the morning, come back and I paddled at night. Went to the doctor and you know he, they give you the book everything you want to know about breast cancer, afraid to ask. and. I had that book and I had decided to go to the coffee shop that um, I frequented and I went in there with the book turned upside down backwards against my chest because I was didn't want anybody to know and uh, the lady who worked behind the counter, Becky, um, reached forward and plucked the book out and said, I know that book, um, you or somebody else and I said me and she came around and sat down and we discussed it. She took me to a support group and they said, oh, you should dragon boat. And I said, are you nuts? Go on the water? <laughs> Forget that. <laughs> My goodness, you guys got to be crazy. I'm not getting in there. They handed me a paddle and they said, just in case you might want to. And uh, I said, oh, there's no way. I hate the water. Yeah, forget this. And that was um, 15 years ago. <laughs> Went down the Saturday morning and we started paddling and the boat lifted up and the feeling of this boat flying on top of the water and I've I've never been much of an athlete but I thought I can do this and this is really fun. I really really want to do this. 
I think, you know, it has changed my life. I wasn't really into sports in any way. So doing that and really enjoying it and becoming, becoming a bit of a jock now, you know, which is kind of surprising. The hardest thing I'd ever done in my life. I hadn't exercised a lot since I'd been sick. I think I paddled eight strokes and had to stop. I thought my arms were going to fall off. And I looked around thinking I'm the youngest one in this boat and I can't do this. It took a long time. I thought, oh, I'm never going to get this. I, I'm never going to be in time. I'm never going to stop splashing people. I just could not paddle properly. I just was, you know, you're making it. Uh, a twirl with your arm, Chris, you know, keep it, you know, like a piston, go down. And so that was my hardest part. And getting the strength of your um, upper body, because you haven't been using that for a while, been guarding it because of the surgery and that, so. Some of us can't get our arm up that high. Some of us can't rotate that well, you know, and that's, that's just, as long as we're hitting the water at the same time, coming out at the same time, that's all that matters. With each day that went by, things got better. Seeing the strength that all of the other women had made me want to try even harder. First, I used to be with a breast of life in Qualicum Parksville, and I broke my arm coming out of uh, exercising. It was in the winter, and I got through that and then I got lymphedema and one of the girls that was a breast cancer survivor she says well why don't you start a team in Nanaimo I said well I will if you'll help and so we started the angels we didn't have a boat we didn't have any money we started to go fundraising we sold everything that we could think of except for our bodies we got started and the guy in Vancouver built the boat and I think it cost us 20000 with all the paddles. <laughs> the coaches that we had were really good coaches, very nice people. They were, you know, extremely talented in the coaching department but they weren't survivors and you know we kind of could play them like oh you know I'm sore and they'd say oh that's okay Sally you don't have to work hard. On three we're going to touch our blade of the paddle to the water. One, two, three. And to center we're going to go the opposite way. One, two, three. So when I took over coaching I just thought you know I know what I can do so I know what you can do and I'm a survivor too, and I've been in that boat, and I have paddled, and I know how hard to push you. And so that's how I ended up doing it. I think one of our biggest advantages is having Elaine coaching, because she is a survivor. Any other coaches have sort of babied us, if you will, don't overwork us, but Elaine being a survivor, she works us like you wouldn't believe because she knows what you can do. To stay in time, you have to focus. For those of you in the back, if you can't see all the way to stroke seat, watch Liz and Karen. They are in seat five. For my coaching viewpoint is more if we're all in time and we're all doing it together and we're having a good time and you're giving me the best that you can give me, then we're good. We want to do the best that we can and be proud of what we did. And that's all. One day Celeste said to me, Benita, you need to get a passion about something. And I said, well, I got a passion about roses. Well, no, I mean something more active, you know. You've got to get out there and do something. And she had been, obviously at that point, uh, discussing the possibilities of me getting into a dragon boat with our hairdresser because his mother was a dragon boater. 
She was a breast cancer survivor. I got the name of Bet on the team as a contact person, and I called her, and she was just delightful, and said, oh, Celeste, well, I'd love to meet you and your partner, Benita, and I tell you what, we're doing a fundraiser down at, at the foundry, at the pub. Why don't you come by on Saturday, that we'll be selling burgers and beer, and all you have to do is get her there and leave the rest to me. Celeste was determined that I was getting in that boat. Long story short, a week later, she went out in the boat for the first time. And she came back, she came off that boat, and I think about it, I still get quite emotional because she just had a glow about her. She was so radiant and so happy and so excited. And, and she couldn't wait to sign up and become a member of the Angels of Breast Dragon Boat team. And she hasn't stopped since. She's their tiller, and by everybody's testimony, she's one of the best tillers out there. I can compete with them all. At first, I wasn't sure. I liked the peacefulness of the water. It was a very peaceful environment. I didn't know what I was doing, but the whole environment was superb. I think the most important thing for me is to get everybody across the finish line safely. I really don't care how I place. I want everybody to do everything they can to get us across the finish line. And that they're exhausted at the end of the race. And I know we've done a good job. It's sort of like we're one, in that each of us is separate, but we come together as a team. And we pull together to get us not only to events, but to make the best of life. It's that kind of teamwork camaraderie that makes it a very powerful place to be in the boat, also outside the boat. For me, maybe it's about belonging to, to the team, about belonging to a group of people who actually care about you, you know? I just enjoy the experience, but we've become such a close team, and I've got like 24 new friends that I didn't have before paddling, and, and they're all great women, they've all been through a lot, and it's just so much fun to be part of that. I was not a pink ribbon kind of girl. I um, didn't think there was anything pink or pretty about it. Um, I had no, no issues with the girls that, that experienced that, um, but it just wasn't for me. And so when I got in the boat, I realized you can embrace this. This, you know, you can embrace this, and I embraced it wholeheartedly. I am pink from the bottom of my toes to the top of my head, whether it's a wig or a tutu or a boa. I just go for it. I have fun with it, and it's good. I love the festivals. It's fun, the preparation to getting ready. It's kind of like a big field trip. <laughs> Every year we try to attend at least four or five festivals. The festivals are great because uh, we do get to know a lot of the other teams uh, from around the island and, and there's a lot of familiar faces and it seems to get more fun every year. You don't look like an angel to me. <laughs> I will see lots of people I maybe haven't seen since last festival. I've either paddled with most of them at one point in my paddling uh, career, or I have um, recruited them to paddling. We're only doing five, and this is our what? Second. And then the Nymo, Howitton Bay, and then back here. I really like it when I go to the survivors' um, races. For me, it's really important. First racing teams, take your positions, please.
You don't know where I'm going. You don't know what I've seen. But I have a great adventure right before me. And it has not yet been written. And it hasn't yet been told. Because the best part of the story is yet to unfold. And I'm sure there will be danger, less than mystery. Right. And I know there will be times when I give up quietly. I like the um, exertion, the exercise, the physical challenge, and I like being part of a team. I like that feeling of being part of the boat experience. Because I can paddle on both sides and I'm, I don't have a serious permanent injury, I can sort of sit in different seats. And I actually really like that because wherever you are in the boat, part of the engine or part of the mid or part of the front stroke seats, it's like a different job to do. It is truly amazing. All of these people who totally understand what you've been through without having been there. But everybody gets you and there's no judging. Everybody understands the limitations that you may have with paddling. I've had a paddler who, who struggled. Um, she was very dedicated to the team, had been a long time member. She came out to every single practice. She came to every single fundraiser. And she always had a space in the boat. And we were at a competition, a festival, and another coach said to me, you know, why do you let her paddle? She's like, you know, worst paddler ever. And I just said, you know what, that's who we are. You know, she comes out, she deserves a seat in that boat. I have never ever had a normal mammogram. I've always had a three month, six month. I had my mom, her three sisters, and my grandmother all had breast cancer. So for me, I always knew I was going to get it. Like it was just a waiting game. This one time she went in and uh, came back and uh, told me that the, there was something irregular about the mammogram. And um, it caught us by surprise, of course. and. She, she had to do uh, further testings and um, did the biopsy and found that it was indeed um, cancerous. And uh, I think at that moment we just um, sort of withdrew within ourselves and um, we didn't know what we were facing. I think it's a shock to anybody that here is the C word. Of course, the kids, they were absolutely devastated. Claude had the nasty uh, bit of telling them because I couldn't say cancer. I couldn't say I have cancer. I found it really difficult. And so I dumped on Claude and he did it. But when Eric came in, he's 6'5", this big thing, and he walked in and everybody scattered so that Eric and I could have time. And he was my five-year-old again. He walked in and his face contorted and it got beat red and he was just, and he grabbed me and hugged me. And he said, this isn't good. He said, I, I don't want you to die, mom. And it was like, it just, but you know what? I always said I wouldn't have got through it without my family and my friends. They were amazing. Rosalie, at the onset, didn't think that she was a survivor, but she is a survivor. Well, my husband was very supportive, of course. He came to all my uh, appointments with me and took notes because um, it's find it's a very uh, brain-numbing experience. It's hard to actually take any information in. So he, he took notes on it, and um, he shaved his head when I lost my hair, too. So that was, that was kind of cool. So within an hour, I went from a mammogram to breast cancer. It was like, bang. 
And they say if you're going to have breast cancer, do it in BC. So that was on the 16th of June. And then on the, by, I went and saw the surgeon and I was booked on the 27th of June. They phoned me for radiation, 16 treatments. And I said, well, I can't go. And they said, what do you mean you can't go? And I said, well, I, I booked a horseback ride up in the itches and I can't go. I said, I had to wait for you. You can now wait for me. So I went up there for my 10 days, came back, did my 16 treatments. And I bumped into somebody from the noose because they had their jackets on. And I said, I wanted to drag a boat. And so she said, well, come and join us at the noose. And I said, no, I want Nanaimo. So I gave her my name. And before I got home, Jill phoned me and there was a message on my phone saying, can you come to practice on Wednesday? I actually had a hard time. People wouldn't talk to me because they were, uh, they didn't know what to say. And that, that really bothered me. It says, I don't have, I don't like, I don't have um, the plague or something. Like, talk to me as a normal person, like you used to talk to me before. I really found out who my friends were because lots of friends couldn't deal with it. You know, I was so glad when my hair came back in so I don't have to be that person that has cancer. You can just talk to me normally. When I went through it myself, I, w I was not aware of this facility. I had to get my own prosthesis and I bought my own wig. I didn't realize I could come to the Canadian Cancer Society and get a wig or a prosthesis or a, or a bra, a mastectomy bra, here free of charge for my use. So it is great. The first time I met a lady who said, well, I'm a 20-year survivor, I just went, oh my God, I'm going to live. <laughs> you know, because when you're like a six-month survivor, 20 years is a long time, right? There's your water for your tablets that okay. you have to take. Thank you very much. And then I'll be right back to see you're okay. okay. Every Tuesday I go, it helps the patients realize that there's life after cancer. A lot sort of have given up and um, I never did, so I don't understand that. But um, with my humor, and I guess my personality, I can get away with a lot with the patients and say, um, you know, if you want to die, just go ahead, hurry up and die and get it over with. And you know, they, pardon? Well, either die or start living, do one or the other. Don't just sit there in limbo. And this kind of helps, like I'm not clinical in the unit, I'm just not clinical. This will make you feel better. Thank you. Oh, Bet was wonderful. She just was a life there, She, life force. She would come in and um, go around and greet everyone. She was everyone's friend. And uh, she'd come over and, what can I get you? And she'd talk to you about, you know, what's been happening and that. She was a great, great person to be. Be around. You know the whole support group and then I got into dragon boating and that became my family and actually once I started paddling I didn't need the support group because the women were my support group. They were my family. The only support group I had was the team. The camaraderie is wonderful. It's uh, you know it's a team. I've never been a, I was never anybody at, when I was at school or growing up who was on any teams or anything like that and uh, so being part of the team and being, you know, just one of the many and, and paddling and trying to do your best is, is big for me and uh, the closeness, camaraderie is very important.
race was great, except it was very rough out there and we got soaked. It's going like this and the waves are washing over the boat, everybody's getting wet. You wouldn't believe the waves. It's yeah. We're soaked. But that's the fun of dragon boating. <laughs> On the count of three. Angels. One, One two, two, three. Angels! What does it mean to be a supporter in the boat? Um, well, you haven't had breast cancer, I guess is the simple answer. Um, so because everybody's at various stages in their disease and their treatment, um, this is how it was explained to me anyway, is, is that they don't, uh, some of them may not be able to paddle sometimes because they're still going through chemo, they're not strong, so they need to have enough people to actually be in a race. So there might have been times where some of the regular paddlers wouldn't have been able to be on the boat for whatever reason and then the supporters would take their seats. That was sort of the book definition of a supporter. Um, for me it was partially also because my, my mom is a breast cancer survivor so she's actually coming up five years cancer free. I know what she went through with her mastectomy and the treatment and ongoing issues and things. So. I figure if I can, I don't know, sounds a bit Pollyanna-ish, but keep the boat going by being there um, to take the place of somebody who can't for a moment, then that's being supportive. Lisa actually had gone away on a business trip and she said, oh, there's an open house uh, for the boat. Uh, you should go down to it. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. She goes, Elaine's expecting you. And I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> So I went down and had coffee with the ladies and was talking. And then, you know, I was thinking about it. And there was a few other new members there as well that were talking about it. And all of a sudden, I'm like, okay, well, I'll see you later. I'll, I'll think about it. She goes, oh, no, I've got a spot for you. Yeah, so we'll see you <laughs> at practice on Wednesday. I was like, oh. One. cancer changed your life? Well it slowed me down an awful lot. <laughs> I mean a lot of things that I like to do like my gardening and things like that I, you, I just can't do it and uh, traveling we were going to do some traveling and that's out of the picture right for, for now and I don't know how long that's going to be because <laughs> yeah. he said I'm on chemo indefinitely so I don't how don't really know how long indefinitely is so it uh, yeah, it's, it's changed quite a bit. I've always wanted to do it for a long time. And I figure, well, here's the chance. So if I don't do it now, I'll never do it. Cancer can't kill me jumping out of a plane. I don't think it's going to. <laughs> no, I have to take it off. Where my hat? We're going to take a plane up to 10,000 feet up in the air. Okay. We're going to jump out. We're going to reach speeds of 120 miles per hour towards the ground. Deploy our parachute safely at 5,000 feet and then smile for the rest of the day. Okay, good. Does that sound good? It sounds very good. Right. Swing your legs in and then shimmy forward. Oh, it's way harder getting into a dragon boat. Yeah, I got in the plane and by the time you get up there, it's up 10,000 feet. And the scenery was just absolutely beautiful. The first thing you do is they put your feet out on the part of the plane and I'm thinking oh what the heck am I doing here <laughs> but by that time my feet are out of the plane I don't have much choice so he said okay we're good when I tap you on the shoulder we go out 
So sitting there, I'm sitting there with my feet out of the plane waiting. Okay. So all of a sudden he taps me on the shoulder. And by the time you just go out, you get this real rush of cold air. Like you were falling. I even looked back to see if I was still hooked up because you just float. It's just gorgeous. Oh, it was great. I felt fine. You know, we just all giggled by the time we got down there. Looking up at that sky, thinking, my God, I actually did that. Oh, that was really great. <laughs> oh, yeah, I loved it. I'm going to do it again. Are you? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs>three months of worrying about my own health because I had had a heart attack three months earlier. Then we found out that she had a lump in, on, both, on both sides and so we were kind of hit with a triple whammy. I think I just put it aside, kind of. I didn't really concentrate too much on it. My mom had passed away. I was grieving, um, worried about Larry, of course, and um, I think I just didn't worry about myself, you know, I just didn't take it all in. You're always concerned about any little symptom that, that you might take as being an indication that cancer is returning, whether it's, whether it's a cough or whether it's a pain in your chest or in your, your breast or uh, under your arms or, you know, you're, it's always in the back of your mind. My physician came in after my second operation. I had to stay overnight. And he came into my hospital room and he was, he was sitting down and being very um, um, gentle with me, you know, and saying, oh, you know, it's going to be all right. And, uh, and I said, well, it, it is, you know, this isn't going to kill me. And he said, oh, okay. <laughs> and, he, and he said, you're going to just have to find something else to do that then. <laughs> and I said, yes. I went on the computer and I just put in dragon boat teams or breast cancer survivor teams and Angel's Breast came up. Everything was so moving that I decided I was going to be a part of that. First of all, we used to go to Victoria. The tiller, who was Jim Pierce, we traveled together early Friday because you had to be there for Friday afternoon. And at that time, there was a lot of construction on the road. So Jim said, Lydia, what are we doing going to Victoria? I said, I don't know why. Oh, the festival. He says, but we have water in Nanaimo. Why don't we think about something else? I said, you mean like start a festival in, in Nanaimo? He said, yeah. Members of the Angels went to city council and said, you know, why aren't we having a Dragon Boat Festival in this city? I mean, why do we have to go to Victoria or Vancouver? So they had their first festival in 2003 in Nanaimo. Nanaimo is one of the only festivals actually that is geared towards breast cancer. It's our hometown, so we always like to do well. Usually our family and our friends come up. It'll be the first 500 meter race of the year, um, but we've built up to it. We started with a 250 and then we did a 350. So 500, that's the next logical step. Uh, we have a full boat more than uh, necessary, actually. Um, yeah, I think it'll be a good time. This is a chance for you to have a sip of coffee while I'm doing it. Coffee? Who's got coffee? Sip coffee.
Paper first. Paper first. Piece of paper. Two yeah. cups for both? Well, I'll yeah. just put them here. Now. Do we have a flag somewhere, ladies? I'm missing a flag. I was sitting on a bench in Victoria waiting for my husband to come in. back. Yeah. Well, no, she has to fill And it was so hot up there, and I, so I took my hat off like this and went like this. So I was sitting there for a minute, and this woman walked by, and she said, would you put that hat back on? That really offends me. And I just looked at her, and I was like, God forbid if you ever have to have chemo. And she just went struggled off. <laughs> a little bit competitive towards some of the other breast cancer survivor teams because we sort of feel we're at the same level as them and it's it's a good test of how hard we've been working but seriously when we're in a race against a competitive team we are not going to be uh, coming in first <laughs> oh we're competitive <laughs> We're definitely competitive. We would like it be nice to win. It doesn't matter that we don't win. But uh, yeah, I know we're definitely competitive. Yeah. I think so. We're winners already. We've won our battle. And now I think what we're doing is just trying to better our times in a dragon boat. So I think we all try our best to be, you know, competitive. And I have to realize we have limitations. I mean, I'm in my 60s and some of the people that we're competing against are 30 years old or younger and very, you know, very fit. So you, there's just no way that um, we're ever really going to beat them. But uh, I'd love to beat them. <laughs> well, we like to say we're non-competitive, but... <laughs> I think we all want to win. I don't really care if we win. My goal is from spring to fall for Elaine, if we can get better times, if we've improved. We're never going to be a top team because we're an older team and we're just women. But if we can knock off some time, then that's meant the coach has done well. For me, my whole goal as the coach was to have everybody work hard but get out of the boat smiling. If you're not having fun then you shouldn't be there whether you're competitive or not you know and, and people say oh I'm not competitive but race day you wouldn't be in the boat if you weren't competitive you know so if you're giving it your all that's being competitive. It's always nice to win. I think there's, you know, there's enough competitive spirit there, but it's a friendly competitive spirit. I always think that I could actually lose a race for that team and there'd be no fingers pointed. You know, I just think they're a great bunch of women. The one thing I didn't like is I didn't like being, and I still don't, like I think I'm a dragon boater who happened to have had breast cancer. I don't think I'm a breast cancer the dragon boats. On Sunday at noon, they have a ceremony they call the Carnation Ceremony. In our Nanaimo Festival, the Carnation Ceremony is a kind of a ritual, I suppose, some tribute made to people who have not survived their breast cancer. It's just a, a real um, spiritual, for lack of a better word, spiritual experience. The first year, um, so I was not even a year into breast cancer, um, it was very emotional for me. It was like uh, walking through the paddles when you get off the boat after the survivor race was just, I just bawled through the whole thing. It was just like, it was, it was hard. Woman am I, spirit am I, I am the infinite within my soul. 
I have no beginning and I have no end. Oh, this I am. Woman am I, spirit am I. I am the infinite within my soul. I have no beginning and I have no end. Oh, this I am. Woman am I, spirit am I. I am the infinite within my soul. I have no beginning and I have no end. Oh, this I am. Blessed am I, spirit am I. I am the infinite within my soul. I have no beginning and I have no end. Oh, this I am. Very touching indeed, because I know a few people that have not made it through um, cancer and family members and that, so yeah, it was very touching. When I first joined, I joined with a woman called um, Maggie St. Martin, and uh, she and I both had the same kind of cancer, but hers was aggressive. Um, and so I remember her saying to me, Jill, she said, you know, if I die tomorrow, I'm going to be happy because she said I got to paddle with the angels in a dragon boat. So it was very special. So we lost, I lost Matt, we lost Maggie about a year later. And um, that's the hard part. I've lost a lot of friends. We've lost some longtime paddlers that have been there for years. And it's not necessarily a recurrence of the breast cancer itself. It's a recurrence of cancer. Coming on the angel's boat, you've got to accept we're not here forever. When they're gone, we try to acknowledge them with little nameplates for paddlers that are no longer with us because they have died. And it's just the right thing to do. I think more than anything, it makes you feel more driven and more powerful than you really would normally think you are. You may feel drained, you may feel exhausted, you may feel like you just can't give it anything more. And something takes over and just sort of makes you forge forward and work through the pain and, and uh, get done what you need to get done. There's a spirit in that boat. You know what I mean? I am in total awe of these ladies. You have to think that in our boat right now, we probably have a third of them new, like brand new, not new from other teams, but brand new paddlers. We have a lot of new paddlers now. Before we had to take on um, supporters to get our boat out as well. Now we have to limit our supporters to five because we have that many more survivors. And every event that we've gone to, we do one a month, we've won something. I think the season has gone terrific. We did manage to finish off this year with just a, a wonderful memento of our efforts all year and we got the uh, ladies silver division second, who placed second. Yeah. <laughs> right now I think we have to be the happiest group of paddlers of any other team in Nanaimo. Tell me, what does the boat mean to you? It gives me many things. It gives me exercise. It gives me a sense of well-being. It gives me friendship. It, it is all kinds of things like that. It's all positive, really positive in my life. Just caring about one another, I think that's the best part. Dragon boating was a lot harder than I initially expected it to be. Uh, but it's contagious, it, it's uh, something you just get hooked on and the friendships I've made have been just meant the world to me. What does it mean to you to be in a, a boat of breast cancer survivors? That's a good question and I've thought of that over time. What it means to me is that they have struggled to get where they're going 
and I'm not a breast cancer survivor, but I also have struggled. And I feel comfortable knowing that these people will not just uh, turn over and say, oh, I guess life isn't as easy as it, as it could be and, you know, I'm giving up. No, they're going to continue doing what they can. They're going to take it to the next level if they can and never say, I can't do it. They just keep doing it. I have met such a lovely group of women. I wouldn't be on any other team if I had a choice. This is the team for me. Seeing all the struggles that they've been through, and some of them are still going through, or maybe for the second or third time, and the fact that they can get past it and move on, that's all I need. If they can do it, I know that I can do it. You've had cancer how many times, Beth? Well, three surgeries, well, and four. Skin, I'm still, I, I will always battle till the end of time. Um, but I've had two colon, my breast, and skin. Wow. How, how do you feel about all that, looking back? It's history. I don't think about it. Mm -hmm. I just know and, and pray that uh, the cancer has the message, it's not going to get me. So it may as well find something else to do. <laughs> Oh, cancer's changed my life outlook a, a lot. I'm no longer that a negative person at all. You have to look forward and think of all the things that you've had throughout your life and um, be blessed that you're still here to enjoy them. So you're optimistic going ahead? Yeah. I mean, you can't take it with you. You might as well do whatever happens along the way. You just enjoy it and embrace it, you know. And I mean, there's been wonderful women I've met all over the world, and you know, you you keep in touch with them, and or you go to festivals, and there they are. It's, you know, it's really nice. It's not about breast cancer. It really isn't. It's. Uh, I mean, yes, we all you know have had our our, our experience with it, but it's just a bunch of girls getting together being active and dragon boating. It's, uh, it's so much more than, than having been a breast cancer survivor. It, it's so much more. mindset especially if the waters are calm and it's a nice evening and you just kind of floating around and I mean you're working hard but you're working hard with a group of women who you know and who know you and you all care about each other and you've all done it before it's a good feeling